Right, welcome everybody uh, to tonight's webinar. Uh, the, we're doing two webinars tonight, so I'll keep myself and James busy for the night. Uh, the first one we're going to touch on is cattle and dairy. Um, so if you're looking for the sheep one, you can come back at eight o'clock. Uh, so we're going to get straight into it. Um, my name is Katie Shanahan and I'm content marketing executive here at Herdwatch. And um, I'll pass you over to James. You can introduce yourself. My name is James Grevy. I am the head of product here at Herdwatch. Brilliant. Uh, so guys, for the next roughly 30 to 40 minutes, we won't keep you too long. Uh, we're going to go through just a little bit of background first on Herdwatch and how we've come to the whole cattle and dairy side of things. Uh, we'll remind you on a few of existing features. Uh, we'll give you some of the new features that are coming. James then will do a little bit of a demo to show you both existing and new features within the app. Uh, we'll do a little Q&A at the end, but uh, feel free to pop in uh, questions as we're going. You can see at the top there, there's a feature Q&A. So you can pop them in there and we'll get to the, all of them, as many as possible at the end of the webinar. And then um, we'll just touch, I'll touch a little bit briefly on certain competitions we're running, um, events we'll be going to over the next few weeks and things like that. So moving swiftly on, I'll just give you a little bit of background uh, to Herdwatch. So we have over 21,000 Herdwatch members worldwide. We have over 2.3 million cattle active in the app today. So that's across all regions. We have over 2. million calf births recorded to date, over 1.7 million sheep managed on our app. And then in terms of uh, maps, we have over 750 acres mapped on the Herdwatch app. So there are just a few, um, I suppose, insights to Herdwatch and what we've accomplished to date. So then I suppose um, you're, you know Herdwatch and some of you would have known Flockwatch. And in recent months, we have made the transition to cattle and dairy, sheep and goats, and grass and crops. So since Herdwatch was launched in 2014, we have been helping over 20,000 members with their herd performance and farm compliance. And like I said, in 2023, we transitioned from Herdwatch to cattle and dairy, and like Flockwatch to sheep and goats. And then, of course, we brought out our new grass and crops uh, tool. So then I might just pass you over to James. You might give a little brief overview of the current and existing features on cattle and dairy for everyone. Yeah, I'll just give you a quick run through the stuff, I suppose, that we're already doing today across the few topics I've here. So um, I suppose management and compliance would be, would be the first most important piece that any farmer that's using Herdwatch today or Herdwatch uh, cattle and dairy or sheep and goats can record their as their day to day uh, events such as like their medicine report and to be compliant with be with um or be a red tractor uh, or any other quality assurance schemes. So the, I suppose the key thing is you record medicine use, uh, weight recording, calf birth records, breeding recording, you know, like services, pregnancy scan, and heat detections, um, and basically answer related to your to your animals, um, in a way that. The app, obviously, you all, all know this for it works offline, so you don't need to use it. It backs up the cloud, so your data is always safe. And it's a very important thing that we probably don't emphasize enough. That even if something does, you know, you do lose the phone, it does get broken. It's only a matter of logging back into the app and get going again. But ultimately, we're giving the farmers the ability to record all their day to day animal and now field uh, recording recording tasks. And we can probably go into some of the more relevant stuff for this time, uh, time of year. We're getting the demo side of it, but. You know, a lot of you will be weighing cattle now as well as you're coming to the shed. You can obviously record that through Hardwatch. Um, uh, and you can do it. You can link it with the ID reader today so you can quickly scan in those tags and speed that job up as well. You can do your dosing. So if you're dosing animals, you can record that. Um, dry off management as well for dairy farmers who are kind of getting towards that tail end of the year. Not alone can you record your dry offs and have them automatically go to um, uh, ICBF in Ireland, but you can actually, we actually have a dry off management tool as well, which will help you decide what cows need to dry off, what you need to dry off next and help you make some decisions around whether you're going to use selective dry cow therapy or not. There's a, there's a lot in there, there's something for everyone in the audience. Exactly. 
So moving swiftly on, just to go through, I'll go through them briefly, just the new features. And like I said, James will do an actual visual demo within the app. Um, so if you like, you can pull out your app as well um, to have it ready and he'll walk you through some of the new features that are there. But um, what we have coming, we have a new milk collection um, feature. We have some new quick action buttons that you can see on the image here on the right at the very bottom, um, just to get into those tasks faster. Um, we have some new features on our buy and sell platform. So the buying and selling of cattle, uh, some new dry off management features and uh, some dosing and the just treat button. Like I said, those fast action buttons at the bottom. So I will now hand you over to James who will share his screen and will take you through some of the demo on the app. So if you have your phone, you can pull out, pull it out and join along. I'll try and share my screen and we'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, I, sure. Perfect. Um, so the first thing I, I'll start and just bring you through is the new uh, milk, uh, milk collection uh, feature. So this one is more I'll just talk through as opposed to demo it because I suppose um, for the, it's it's only really applicable to dairy farmers. But uh, for the last number of years, we've had a feature with Hardwatch where you could record your collection. So whenever the, the lorry pulled up and um and collected your milk, you record how much how much milk was collected, how many cows were being milked at a time, and obviously your fats, your proteins, um, cell count, all the stuff related to it. But what we've actually been working in the background is a way of automating that um automating that data flow into Hardwatch. So we're happy to announce that in our next release, which will be going live next week, you'll actually we'll have a, an automatic link with our first uh, dairy processor which is a Revo uh, over here in the west of Ireland. Um, so as your milk is collected, it'll flow into the herd watch once you've set up the permission. So obviously this is your data, your, your farm data. So you'll need to give us permission um, to basically access that on your behalf. And once you do that, then basically that milk will flow down after each collect and flow down to the herd watch app. So you'll let me able to see how your cows are performing and start tying all those pieces together. So that's part of, I suppose, our overall kind of um, vision to help farmers understand how their farm is performing at a, at a whole level and obviously your milk production is the main unit of production for it for a dairy farmer so having basically what we'll be able to do in in the next version of this one this is live is we'll be able to automatically calculate the number of solids per cow based on the amount of cows that are currently being milked so we'll give you those calculations live and then we'll be also layering in things like cows cur currently in milk Cows are currently out for withdrawal, so you'll constantly have a feel for how many animals are actually in my, uh, how many cows, um, how much are in my milking at each one, without working work out okay what cows are out of the out of the tank because they're in withdrawal from mastitis or whatever else. So it just ties all that stuff together, and we're building on this to help. I suppose we really want to help farmers. First of all, remove their compliance with their paperwork, but actually, um, in a longer term view, understand how their farmers performing from a animal performance view, but also financial performance view. And this is one of the one of the big keystones for dairy farmers in, in there to help them understand that. Um, so basically you can see here, this is a collection record. Uh, the data was collected as today, the amount of milk that was in it. It just gives you a readout of the temperature, the protein, the fat, lactose, um, and cell count, which is getting a bit high, uh, and urea, and any other information that comes back as part of our test results. So that flows, will flow down automatically into the app. We'll be, I suppose, we'll be talking about it uh, more over the next next couple of weeks and months. But if it's something that you are you'd like to get done for your cooperative, your dairy processor, just start talking to talking to us and talking to whoever your milk quality advisor is. That we're, you know, we we want to connect with, with every um, every dairy processor have farmer give farmers the ability to access all their farm information through the app. So that's that's the first big thing. It's hard to demo it because it'll flow in automatically, but that's kind of what it'll look like. And it'll evolve over time as well. Um, I suppose keeping with the dairy side of things, then uh, another piece of functionality which actually isn't new, but a lot of farmers don't know it exists, is our dry off management module, which you'll find in the management section. Uh, so you go to dry off uh, management and here, you'll see this little section here. What this does is for dairy farmers who are milk recording, it'll actually summarize your average herd somatic cell count, what cows are potentially suitable for cyclic dry cow therapy. Again, it's up to the farmer to decide what the parameters are, but it just kind of gives you a tool to decide what may or may not be eligible. 
it'll show you your number of cows that are due to dry off and your number of cows that are currently dry. So you can see here we've got 38 cows still in milk. I can actually click on my just all these all these tiles here are clickable, so I can click on my cows due to dry here, and it'll just give me a little table view of whether it's potentially suitable for selective dry cow therapy. And what it does here is in the setting you can set what your threshold is for your um, minimum somatic cell count per cow for it to be eligible. That's the first thing it looks at, and you need to have a number of uh, milk recordings first of all. Then it looks at did it have a case of mastitis? If it did then it'll, um, it will automatically remove it because if it had mastitis, then there may be latent disease there. It'll look at your latest, latest somatic cell count, your highest somatic cell from that cow, any case of mastitis it has, so I can just quickly sort like that. And I've had no case of mastitis here, so happy days. Your current lactation, tell you the number of days the cow is in milk, so you can see here we can sort these. I have a few cows here that really need to dry it off, they're a bit too long in milk. When their next calving date is, how far away they are, your last dry date, your current milk production. So it just brings all that relevant information together so you can actually make that decision. Um, so that's the dry off module. And then obviously when you're recording your dry off, dry off uh, event or treatment, as most farmers will be either giving a teat sealer or giving a teat sealer on, on, on antibiotic, what we'd recommend is that farmers just record that as a standard uh, medicine treatment. So like every other medicine treatment, you basically you can go and you record um, through, I suppose, we can, now is a good time to look at the quick actions. So hopefully you're all familiar with the Orange Plus button here, which basically gives you our, our um, menu of records that you can record. So I can either pick an option here or we have to search functionality too as well where you can record a remedy. So I can just search that and record a remedy or a cattle treatment or a dry off, depending on what you want to how you want to um, term it, but that that's a search search store like any other search like Google. It'll you can use whatever terms you use, and it should match to the task you want to do. Or I can go and I can record from one of my quick, quick actions. So my Orange Plus button has been there for quite a while, but our quick actions are only there over the last uh, last few months. So what this does is it brings you quickly into one of those tasks. So our most commonly used tasks are calf registration, remedy purchases, and rem and cattle treatments. So if I'm going to record a cattle treatment for dry off today, I can do that. So we've also layered in a, a new, I suppose a new piece of functionality, which is, which we're calling our treatment only flow or our just treat flow. So a lot of farmers in the past would have told us that they really love the idea of having the medicine cabinet and it's great to have a stock take, but sometimes it's not always practical where if you're treating an animal and for whatever reason, you haven't had a chance to record that treatment into your cabinet and you go to treat an animal crush side, you don't have the time to go in and put it into your cabinet at that time. So what we've done is given farmers the ability to actually record a treatment on its own without it being linked to a purchase. And then you can go back and link it to a purchase after the fact. So if, say for example, I'm doing this with my treatment only flow here. I can click on this. What does it do? It'll just bring me into my list of medicines that are currently available to use. So I can click on find dry off. Or it could be dry off, it could be a dry uh OV seal here, or it could be uh, whatever you're using, Cydectin or Ivamec for, for dogs and cattle coming into the shed. Click on that. So I, 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 another piece of functionality as well we brought in the last few months is I can actually use more than one uh, medicine at a time. So I can use a I can use a dry coat tube, but I can also use a sealer as well. If I find a sealer here too, uh, because typically I'll be tubing and sealing in the one go, I can record both of these in one time the date so i say I'm, I'm tubing there today so this brings us to our normal medicine flow here so i can say it's administered by myself I actually we set a main operator now as well so if i set that it'll remember me the next time how many animals i'm giving how many how many um tubes i'm giving per cow so i give them four four tubes per cow because of obvious reasons uh what you know to measure so it's tubes i'm giving Withdrawal dates in there as well. We also have the ability to change from days and hours on withdrawal. So we'll say we know these are 40 day withdrawal uh, tubes. Go next. It actually asked me, because I'm going on to my next medicine now, do I want to copy all those details into the um, into um, my next treatment? So I'll say yes. So let's bring me into my sealer here. Same thing in again, giving it four tubes. And then I just pick my animals. So this chair is today's year, or I could actually dry off a group if I wanted to. I can pick and dry off my 17 cows. 
and go save. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I can go back here. That's that done. So I've recorded my dry off tubes there for that Jersey cow. That's the recorded treatment through our watch through the quick action. So that then basically ends that cow's lactation. So it's, it's a nice piece of functionality brought in, which is really relevant this time of year for farmers that are for drying off. And if you're just dosing in general, it's the same the same thing too as well. Um, so that's, any questions on that side of things, Katie, or any questions coming in about recording medicines or treatments? So Angela just said there, can you record treatments as a batch of animals or only one, one at a time? Absolutely. Absolutely, you can record a treatment as a, batch of, as a batch of animals. So another thing that farmers will say to us sometimes is, what happens if I make a mistake with herd watch? You know, it, can I go back and fix it? Because some farmers, particularly when they're getting started, they think when they save something that's done and you can't go back and edit it. It's kind of, it's not like, in, in a sense, it is like the pen and paper. You can go back and we can tip exit and we can change it. So say, for example, if I made a mistake there and I can go back to my compliance here and I want to find my treatment record, I go to my remedies and treatments here and I can find my list of treatments. So I just pick on my dry cow to here. And I can actually go here on this three dots and edit it. So that lets me edit the entire treatment, go next. And instead of dosing one animal, I want to dose a group. So I can do a batch of cows there, select them all and save. Now it's asked me, do I want to include animals that are marked as moved out? So you'll notice these animals here have little orange icons. So that tells me those animals are no longer in my herd. Because when you sell animals, they kind of move out of the main herd list and they go into the background, but you can still always record records through them. So I'm just going to say yes here because if it's a dummy record, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's basically linked to an entire group in one go. So that's the medicine side of things. Um, some other another piece, I suppose, a functionality then from on the on the beef beef side of things. So obviously, medicines are is, is applicable to dairy beef uh, dairy beef farmers, but. Um, We've made it easier as well for farmers who are buying and selling animals to actually get their um to update their animals, particularly ones who are trying to keep track of what what's the purchase weights and the purchase price and buying animals at versus what I'm selling it. So hopefully you all know as well we've working hard on um this area called uh, our automated cattle mar margins, which help farmers um basically import data for of um whether it's mark documents or abattoir documents for um for slaughtering animals so we can automatically pull the price the dead weight the grade um the live weight if you're buying from the mark of the documents but if you don't have the documents and you just know that they were weighed uh, and you want to record it you can quickly do that now too so i'm going to livestock sales and purchases here pick on livestock sales and i can actually update an individual sale document here so I can update a sale price at an individual or a group level, or actually in the next release, uh, um, I'll be able to up, update basically a, um, a weight for all those animals. So I can enter an average weight for the animals or an average price, and that'll automatically com come down and divide it up and say, if I, pay, if, I know, uh, if I know on average there are 600 kilos, we can add that on. So then you have a starting weight and a finish weight. And another another thing that I suppose we started we worked on as well, and we're going to explain more to farmers on how to do it. But particularly for farmers who are buying or selling a lot of animals through the mart or to the factory, most people will get that information back via email. So we've actually created a way that every farmer has a herdwatch email, which is their herd number or their holding number at herdwatch.email. And if you give that that email address to your factory or to your mart. When they send that information to the email address, we'll automatically take that and import it into Herdwatch. So we'll just basically ingest that and give you automatic prices on each animal. So you'll automatically see what, what each animal made, what you bought them at. They can hear, you can see any of the, the grade, the price, the dead weight, all the relevant information to the animals, to the animal's um, profile. So that's something we'll be starting to talk about a little bit more over the next couple of weeks. We'll explain to our farmers you know, we'll tell everyone what their what their herd watch email address is, because every farmer has their own unique email address that they can use for for their their getting their um, sale information in there. But ideally, in the longer term, they can get actually any farm document in there, and they can use it as a way of storing or communicating. So it's a it's a it's a big piece that's coming over the next few weeks. Um. So that's that side of things. Uh, okay, what else was I was I to cover? <laughs> <laughs> Um, hold on, there's just actually a few questions coming in. Um, 
Laura just said, once I have ordered tags, how do I mark the task off as completed so it'll come off the watchboard? Um, so there should be a little to do uh, plan jobs in here. I don't. So if you actually, if I go in here, I pick one of these, you can be able to mark it as done. So when you click mark as done, it'll come off your watchboard list. Brilliant. Hope that answers that for you, uh, Laura. Um, Robert said, sometimes when you're treating a large group or coming to the end of a bottle, you have to start a new batch, but the app seems to have to stop and restart the treatment with a new batch. Um, so on that, like what we'd always recommend farmers doing. So if you say you're coming, you're, you're treating a large batch, it wouldn't go. And her, what heard what you say is you go to treat it, say it might say, you've selected 100 animals to be treated with, with ivermectin, but you only have enough to do 89. Uh, do you want to continue? So we always say just basically continue and use it all out of the, out of the one bottle. It'll basically it'll just give you the warning to say, you're going to use more that's in the bottle. It's okay. You can then go into another medicine and basically say, if you used a bottle and a half and you only record it towards one, you can actually mark that another bottle is empty. So if I show you quickly in compliance with remedies and treatments, this is a, this is my live medicines cabinet here. So say I've got our, our tramazol here. And for whatever reason, I used all this tramazol. I can hit my orange plus button and I can just mark this remedy as empty because I use it all apart, as part of another treatment. Rather than creating, trying to link each individual bottle or treatment to each pass, you can just basically say, I use a two of them in that. And that wipes it off. So then that levels out your cabinet. Because sometimes, you know, like dosing cattle or treating cattle in, in general isn't always an exact science. As long as you are, you're recording that you did you treated the animals on these dates, you don't have to be 100% linked back to each individual treatment because it's what's important is you're, you're, you're recording the animal record and you know when you last dosed it as opposed to linking every little piece up because it's, sometimes it's not always practical. And sometimes what I do on my own farm at home, if I buy two bottles of whatever I'm buying, I just put it down as one purchase so that I just, you know, instead of having two bottles, I just have one big one. And then all the treatment comes out of that one bottle. I just find sometimes it's easier to do that. Um, if you have any more questions on that, guys, you can keep popping them in there. Uh, James, have you anything else to? Well, I, I just quickly give a quick demo again of uh, of hopefully you've all seen it, but of buy and sell. But we're continuing to get more and more farmers on. So if you don't know what buy and sell is, buy and sell is our I suppose a uh, farmer to farmer tra trading platform that we launched uh, I suppose a little over a year ago now. So you'll see it's buy and sell button on the home screen. And what this allows farmers to do is basically create ads for animals in their herd. Uh, I suppose what's unique about this is you can only advertise animals that are actually in your herd. So brought down from whether it's uh, Ag Food in Ireland or APHIS in the North or PCMS or Scott EID in the UK. Uh, so it always has to be linked to an individual animal, which means that from a buyer's perspective, you know that these animals are actually in a farmer's herd. Um, but also you know that, okay, well, things like the number of residencies are on animals the last tb test date all like important information when it comes to buying and selling will always be there um so you can browse the listing here so i'll just bring me into, into buy and sell so i can see all the live ads we have right now so we've obviously got some lovely cattle in in the lovely rascalman here uh a short turn cross heifer it's going to dower a mart so we have a lot of farmers who are actually advertising that they're bringing animals to the mart which um which we actually will be working a little bit more on. So you can see the animal details here, see a few pictures of them, the different calves. So it's and any extra details with those animals as well. So you can see their age, the residency counts. So we know they came off the one farm and the last TB test. So you know everyone's right with them. Um, which is a big thing when you're, when you're buying animals. And from a seller's point of view, it just makes it a little bit easier to um to work with. And we have a lot we have a lot of farmers who are actually selling find a great way to sell and promote pedigree animals. Even if it's a case of basically they might create an ad and buy and sell and then use that to post maybe to other Facebook groups because it just links all that animal's information and saves you having to type out all the pieces of information with this animal here. So you can see all the data is related to this animal. So it's dam, it's sire, uh, any other details, along with some herd, days and TB tests, like if there's medicine records available. And particularly if you're vaccinated animals, you can you, know, you can prove that I've actually vaccinated my heifers or my voter for X, Y, or Z. And it just gives um, the buyer a bit more confidence. And then I can just go and share that to Facebook, to a Facebook group or to Twitter, like to give you an extra way of promoting your animals. So this is a free service that's available to our Herdwatch members and hopefully it just gives them a way of as well, accessing, accessing new markets, hopefully.
but then even for your current business, I mean, making that process of actually advertising your animals, whether it's you're advertising to sell them privately or you're advertising to sell them to go to the mart. And actually, one of the things that we'll have in, a, in an upcoming release is that you'll be able to say, you'll actually be able to advertise, I'm bringing this bull to Dower Mart or to um, the Cork Mart, and you'll be able to put it in there, put the date. So farmers will then be able to search, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to Ennis Mart next week. What animals are actually advertised in Ennis? So it'll help farmers promote the animals that are selling to the mart, and you can actually find, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about going to the mart, you know where these animals will be and what dates. So it hopefully it'll make it easier from a seller's point of view, but then easier from a buyer's point of view if you're, if you want to have a suss out what's going to what marts and what days. So this is available to all our farmers there. Um, and it's also available. So I suppose the key thing is you need to be on hard watch to, um, to view an ad, sorry, to, to create an ad, but you can view an ad from, from basically um, from the, just from by Googling it. So you just Google buy and sell hard watch. You'll, you'll find our, our listings page. And you can do this off a free account as well. Absolutely. Um, just in terms, you brought up TB there. Uh, Robert asked, how do you enter a TB test? So in Ireland, the TB test date information flows down automatically. In the UK, we'll be launching a feature that basically allow you to link a TB te test date to those animals in early next year. Um, it's a little bit less, a little bit more complicated in the UK. I presume that's where Robert's, Robert's based. And then um, just in terms of the insights, what format has the factory receipt to go into to work successfully? Um, so we, we can take it in, in in a few different ways. Um, so we can, again, email, I suppose, is, is, the most, is the easiest way. So if you pass on your Herdwatch email address to the market or to the factory, that will come in and it'll automatically just get, get brought into Herdwatch and you get a notification that, you know, you might have brought 20 animals to the factory. Those 20 animals have their, their information been processed. Data is now available for you in Herdwatch. But you can also take a picture of the um, of the receipt or you can actually upload a PDF. So if I want to go in here to these animals that I sold, we'll go into our livestock sales and purchases. And say we want our sales here. And say we've got a group of eight animals. I can click on that and just go update sale details. So I could actually basically go add an image or a file here and that'll basically... You can either use it like like your cord attaching anything, I suppose, in your phone. You can either either upload a PDF or you can take a picture of something. Um, if you are taking a picture, I try try to focus on getting as clear and as high quality picture as you, as you can, because if it's blurry, it makes it makes it difficult. That's why if you can actually pass on your your Herdwatch email address to um to your mart or your factory, that it'll come in automatically, and it's it's the most seamless because you don't actually have to do anything. You just get the insights. Uh, which live here, I suppose, is one thing I didn't. Again, I, I hopefully everyone knows about these already, but our insight section lives down here. So it's just not appearing the best on my on my computer, but what it does is it gives you your gross margins. So it tells you what your min, your average, and your max margin is at a per animal level, your margin per day. So this is basically the, your gross margin divided by the number of days on farm that your animal is on, which is obviously a very important KPI for, for farmers who are buying and selling animals, margin per kg of dead weight. But then I can drill into each one of these and it'll actually break it out by uh, by gender, break it out by breed, so you can see what breeds are performing the best in limousine, limousine cross, or Pleasure Blue not doing so well, um, or where you bought it from. So whether it's born on farm or, or actually in section by, by individual suppliers, Particularly if you're recording, okay, I bought, I bought some from Katie, I bought some from James. I can see Katie's animals are doing far better than than, than James' animals that come in a farm. And then it'll help you decide, okay, who should I, whose cattle should I pay a little more for because they do really well versus who should I pay a little bit less for. What it does is it just, it takes all that kind of things, that, all that information that you're, that's kind of anecdotal and it just puts data behind it so you can make the best decision for your farm. And you can drill on it and you can get basically a little table view and it's just not appearing very nice here because... I'm on a on a PC version that's shrinked up, um, but it does look good on the phone. Hey, I promise. Um, so that's <laughs> um, so that's that's the inside side of things. But I suppose so we're working on a lot of different things, and we'll we'll send we'll obviously be sending out a detailed email on ever that's that's been released in this in this new next release, and we're work we're constantly working on more. So and that's there. One of the as so one of the big things that we're 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 looking at um, for next year as well is even a piece from integrating with the wayheads. So we've obviously integrated with EID readers uh, for a little over a year now. 
like it t- it's probably taken us a while because I suppose the technology isn't simple while it's, it should be. It's not always that straightforward, but the uh, it works really well with the ones. And now we're focused on okay and getting that data flowing in automatically from wayheads and doing a bit of other stuff around that. So we're like we're we have a big team working on adding more and more to the app. So we're constantly trying to just keep I suppose keep listening to your feedback and keep improving it and keep trying to add a bit more value to um to our farmers. Brilliant. Uh, James Simon just asked there you might show the where people can message in off the app if they need help but um, sure. as, well, as well as messaging in guys we have a, a customer success team that are on the phones Monday to Friday Um, I'll show the contact numbers at the very end but if James you just want to show them where if they're just busy and want to just message in off the app where we can uh, get back to them through that way as well yeah and what's very important is like a lot of farmers now will, as the, as a calf is born, they'll tag it and register it there and then, and that could be at four o'clock in the morning. And you might have an issue then, and obviously our, our lines aren't open at that, that hour, so you can drop us a message at any time. So you're on the message center here, and you can just write us a new message. So it's very straightforward. So we have a few conversations here, basically. Green, I can go, um, trying to find the message section. <laughs> uh, I just add a new message here. So ask a question. Very straightforward. I use whatever issues you have, just write it out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what it is exactly. We respond out. The more feedback we get, the better. Like it's that's what we're here for. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so I might go back to if you're done there, James, I might pop yeah. up to you can stop sharing. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Oh, I need to stop sharing. Stop sharing, maybe. There yeah, there we go. Right, am I showing now? Yep. Yeah. I can see myself. Uh, so we've been answering there a lot of questions as we've been going. Um, I suppose a few more. Angela said, can we see which animals are farmers here and which are not? Um, I'm presuming Angela is based in Northern Ireland. Uh, at the moment, we can't. Um, there's been some big changes with uh, with APHIS and how we uh, communicate with them over the last number of weeks, which, as you're probably aware, and some of the stuff that we're hoping to have available to us isn't currently available yet. We're hoping that we will have over the next next few months. We'll be able to get that information. But it's just we just don't have it quite yet. It's I think we're waiting for the dust to settle there in terms of that APHIS to to knife a smooth over. Perfect. Um there's a few kind of queries on insights and um it's suppose they're just asking based on what plan they're on and um do they have to upgrade to get yeah. insights. So I I suppose the, the um the insights is a uh, is something that we've been working on for a little almost a year now we've an ent- entirely new team dedicated and focused on it so in order to justify the investment that we put into it and to make it not just the insights but the i suppose how they getting the data in there automatically um it is on it is on our innovator plan which is our highest tier plan um but there's a huge amount of work in parts within that and you can get some value out of it you don't necessarily need to use insight section you can actually we do have excel reports there which are a little bit simpler um, but for the automated insights, which includes basically automating the data in and making sense when I'm presenting in reports that you don't have to do the work on, that is on our on our innovator plan. Perfect. Um, Porik asks, can we see star ratings on animals? Yeah, yeah. So if you go on to, I suppose the first thing is uh, on a star rating, just make sure in and star ratings is related to uh, our Irish customers. Mm-hmm. that heard watch is linked to your icbf account um so if if you go into the settings uh side menu in the settings you'll see basically connect to icbf once connected then the star ratings will flow onto the animal's profile and um, so you'll see the the um the star rating number which is your euro star you know the euro star number really which is which is the important bit behind it 
Perfect. Um, we'll just do one more question there because I'm just conscious of time. Uh, Sam asked, we only got the app recently. So he's on the beef plan. We don't seem to have the breeding option. Is that just for dairy cattle? Um, yeah, so, so the you're on the beef plan. So maybe, it, so there's, we have three different plan levels. We are beef plan, which is typically for farmers who aren't breeding animals. They're just buying and selling. We have our suckler plan, which is for, for suckler farmers uh, or cow-calf operators for our early American friends that we have on the call. Um, that will have all the breeding functions available. So maybe we just need to get you moved on to the suckler plan there, Sam, I'd say. And then obviously on the dairy plan, the, the breeding module is, is available. But we can get someone to follow up with you, Sam, and get that sorted out. Um, so for people asking about um, the mapping, we did a webinar on mapping. Um, it has been shared across social media as well. If you want to have a look at our different uh, Facebook and Instagram, just the Herdwatch accounts, um, it's been shared on there. Uh, da -da. Let me just see. There's loads of questions, so unfortunately we won't get to them all. But like I said, uh, James showed you there where that message feature was on the home screen on the bottom right. So even if you have questions like that, pop them in, people will reply back to you, um, you know, within a day or two. They're very quick to get back to people. Um, I'm going to leave the questions at that for today. Um, I suppose I just want to touch on a few things. So I'm just reminding you all that we have a refer a friend scheme. So if you refer Herdwatch to another farmer and they sign up, uh, you can get in touch with us um, to say you've done so and you will get 50 euro or 50 pound or whatever it is off your next uh, renewal. So just bear that in mind if you do ever say it to a friend or you know a farmer that you know and they sign up with us, just do get in touch. And um, where we'll be next, um, upcoming over the next uh, this month, so we're going to the Irish Farmers Journal Dairy Day in Cork on the 23rd of November. So I'll be at that one myself. Uh, we're going to the Welsh Winter Fair at the end of November and we're also going to Agri Scott. So if you are there, do make sure to pop up to the stand and um, we'll do our best to answer even more questions there. So I know a lot of people are very excited about signing up purely for the um, AWR250 reader. Um, what we'll do is we'll go through. It'll be um, picked at random from all the email addresses that we have received for people who have registered for one or the other. Um, and we will get in touch with you personally. Just make sure you know you're not. Um, there's obviously scams going around and things. So you'll wait to hear from us and we will contact you directly um, if you have won that reader. Um, so that is it there. Um, those who wanted some contact numbers and things like that, if you want to take a picture of the screen there now and to have them, um, again, use the message center in the app. You can call us on those two numbers there um, and you can also pop us an email. So that brings us to the end of this webinar. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it and learned some, you know, that there was some things there that you weren't using that you weren't aware of, um, but also some new features that are coming and things that are, you know, maybe next year. But um, thanks a million to James. You did a great job as always, James. So thank you. Really? And uh, yeah, so that's it, guys. Thanks for joining. And hopefully we will see you at the next one. So thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone.